Congratulations, thanks for your time. Thanks, sir. Wow. Mendez survived a nine minute ordeal with an Egyptian who wanted no part of him. Resorted to everything, including a second round kick. I think this is going to be a much better display of boxing rush. Absolutely, but you know the one thing that disappointed me? So far, the crowds here have been very encouraging towards the boxers. And for them to boo the Cuban as he came out, give him a, a standing boo, you know, I think that shows a complete lack of class with two fighters who are exhibiting their skills in the ring here today. Two world-class fighters. Now the chant goes up, only 30 seconds into the first round, Cuban gets the first scoring blow. This is the first time that's happened. In all the wins the Americans have had, they've taken the lead right off the bat. And now this is the first time in their wins that they have fallen behind, albeit one nothing, that the Cuban has taken the lead. I mentioned this earlier, but it has seemed as though throughout the course of the preliminary bouts here, Russ, that the favored fighter, the, the more highly ranked fighter, gets the points to come up uh, more easily on the computer. So it will be interesting, given these two boxers are highly fought up, to see how the scoring goes here. Absolutely. And one thing I would like you to make note of, Scott, now you've watched enough international boxing to see this. Notice that the, the Cuban, Romero, he's fighting a more North American style of boxing. The hands held a little closer in, a little bit more flat foot. Content to trade punches with Morel as the good right hand and left hook slant. The right hand and the left landing. Not using that long reach that we're accustomed to seeing from the Cubans. Normally we see them come out boxing first and then punching, but this guy's coming out with bombs blazing. Got a fair lead now halfway through the first round. Morel has the crowd behind him. We've seen what that can do for the Americans. Last night, Floyd Mayweather stopped a fighter from Kazakhstan in the second round of their featherweight bout. The opponent was sixth ranked in the world. Big win for him. Big, Mayweather big gave win. him a lesson. Yeah, he sure did. Wasn't all crowd, mind you, but Mayweather seemed to be inspired. Now Morel can use the crowd here, given how this fight's developing. And I'll tell you something, right away, right off the bat, Romero has gotten Morel's respect. Morel is now the one backpedaling. He's the one on the defensive. And Romero is dictating the pace as he stalks, as he stalks Morel. Right against the ropes, again, lands two good shots, and they come up on the score. And one thing the Cubans have working for them in amateur boxing is their proficiency with the computer scoring system. They know which shot score and also know in what area of the ring to deliver them. Yeah, we're going to have to show you how that's done. It's a science the Cubans have down. They get into that area where they've got good visibility from at least three of the five judges, which is what's needed to score a point, and they land. And this is a huge, huge lead for Romero. Romero isn't one of the better known Cuban Again, boxers. Right Nice combination by Maiko Romero of Cuba. He's going to say he's not one of the better-known Cuban boxers. He's only been on the national team for a couple of years. Defeated countryman Hector Barrentes to make the Cuban team. But he's proving to be a fine boxer, Russ. Uh, actually, probably a better puncher than a boxer. He's just coming forward looking to throw bombs. And Morel must be thinking that the bombs are bursting in air. And so, for the first time in this Olympic Games boxing tournament, a USA boxer finds himself behind the eight ball. Eric Morrell trailing after one round. Down to the body, even though there's the right hand. Again, he finishes with the left hook. Right hand again over the top. Those are scoring blows. He's stalking Morrell. Moving him back and coming with that left hook. Right hands, left hooks down to the body as he doubles it up. Even though they're not scoring the hook to the body, it's taking the wind out of Morrell. Again, the right hand over the lowered left hand of Morel, and that rocks him back, and he was shook. A good call by the referee to move into the eight count. Don't look for his counter. Worry about your punches. So the instructions that uh, Eric Morel is getting from his corner are going to be all important. We'll see if he can adjust to Maiko Romero's style in the second round. Romero's style is basic. He's a puncher. He's a puncher, and I'll tell you, if he's the future of, of Cuban boxing, they have a heck of a future. And Second round underway, Michael Romero of Cuba in the blue, Eric Morel of the USA in the red, and the Cuban is in control to the chagrin of the crowd here at the Alexander Memorial Coliseum. You know, we
spoke earlier about the spark plug that these teams might need to get off against each other. And I'll tell you, a big spark fuel combustion has happened here for the Cuban as he takes a 9-1 lead. 10-1 now. Russia made an interesting point. If Romero is the future of Cuban boxing, then the country's okay because there's been all sorts of speculation the team was getting old. Might not dominate these Olympic Games in boxing the way they did in Barcelona where they won seven gold and two silver. Well, I think that still applies that some of their bigger stars are getting older, but this is their young guy. This is a 23-year-old guy. He's only going to be 27 by the time the next games roll around. And imagine with another 100 fights experience between now and then. Only 23, and he's got a career record of 139 wins and 25 defeats. Looks to be heading for his 140th victory in these games. And I'll tell you the most important thing about this, not only is he winning, but watch the way Morel is boxing. Very, very tentative. He's moving away. He's staying far out of range. The only thing he's thinking about is not getting hit. He's not thinking about mounting any kind of offense. And as the time ticks along, Morel just Morel keeps falling further and further behind as Romero dictates the pace. Morel handily decisioned a highly ranked German in a dual meet this year. He beats Logan Linka, sport in the world, 17 to 8. But uh, past that, doesn't have a whole lot of international experience. Romero really likes that left hook to the body, too. Every time he gets a chance to get under there, he really digs it. Finally, some offense from Eric Morel of the USA. But I don't think he's in the class of Michael Romero. do some damage, trying to come back, but if he gets into a punch out with Romero, he's going to be in trouble. Yeah, nice, crisp, clean shots from Romero. One thing we have to say about the American team, they were they didn't think they were going to do pretty good with the pre-Olympics as an indicator. They weren't doing all that well. Last year at the World Championships, only one gold medal, and that was from Antoine Carver. Things did not look good, but they've had a good camp. They're well-schooled, and they're in good shape because for Morel to come back from the pounding he took, in the first minute, minute of the second round, and what he took in the first round, this is good conditioning. Fighting well now in the last half of the second round. Now he takes the fight to Michael Romero. Piling up a few points. He's got the deficit closed to seven. Could be an interesting third round. Conditioning's going to play a big factor here. But you've got to wonder if the Cuban's not playing possum. Chance goes up as the second round comes to an end. The crowd responding to Morel's comeback in the second round. But as it comes to an end, the Cuban is still in front. With a highly entertaining preliminary flyweight bout underway here at the Alexander Memorial Coliseum. Romero of Cuba against Morel of the USA. That's Morel on the red. He's got some work to do here in the third round, but he really came on at the end of the second. Romero knows he's got the lead. Now he's the one boxing. He's the one that's going to move and use that perimeter of the ring. Morel's going to have to be the one to take the offensive. And he's going to walk into shots like that. Good straight jab right down the middle and it scored. Morel moved with his family to Madison, Wisconsin in 92 to be closer to his brother who was in med school there. His other brother, uh, Cirillo Morel, is a pro welterweight. Point gap between these fighters now. One minute into round number three. It's been a great bout. It sure has. You know, you got to give credit to Morel. He took a heck of a pounding in the first half of the fight. He's still there coming back, and he's taking the aggressor's role now. Cubans keeping to themselves in this Olympic Games boxing tournament. They're doing no post-fight interviews. Uh, they were rocked by the defections of Ramon Garbet and Joel Casimir. Coach Alston Segarra is keeping his team under wraps here. Here's what I was saying earlier. You know, we're seeing, i got to say this, we're seeing too many low blows from the Cubans to begin to think that they're unintentional. I know you've made that reference before, but I can't see what uh, Romero could achieve by, by delivering a low blow to Eric Morel. He doesn't have to. He's well in control of this fight. Well in control, but you know he's getting a little tired. He's throwing a lot of hard shots. So just to slow Morel down a little bit, place one a little south of the border. Eric Morel on. The one thing this is showing to me, Morel came out, he was definitely a puncher, and in this round, he's dominating by boxing. So he's beaten Morel both ways. I'll box him and I'll punch him. Straight right hand down the pipe. 
knew he had the lead coming up for the third round. He doesn't want to mix it up with Eric Morrell now. In boxing, anything can happen. It's a one-shot fight. You know, the crowd's reacting to this, but that's all gloves. That's all gloves. That's a slip by Michael Romero, regardless of what the crowd thinks. And Rush, it's going to be interesting to see how the crowd reacts to the decision. System. It's not the computerized scoring system they don't understand. They only see one fighter in a ring when it's an American fighting, and that's the fighter wearing the three letters on his back. Some more scoring shots now. A right followed by a left from Maiko Romero. There's no question he's been the dominant fighter in this bout. As it comes to an end, he's on top of the decision. He outpoints Eric Morello of the USA. A great performance. If this is an indicator of the future of Cuban boxing, they're all right. So the Cubans remain undefeated. They go to 8-0, while the USA drops to 6-1. Nice straight right hand, and then he gets out of the way. Look at that. Beautiful. Comes back in with the left hook. Again, the right hand down the pipe gets under Morrell's left hook. Back into the body. Right hand over the top. Left hook right on the button. Oh, again, the right hand. What a kid this guy is. One end of the spectrum, the Cubans have Felix Savon, five-time world champion. At the other end, they've got a guy like Maipo Romero, 23 years old, making his Olympic debut. And he is very, very Ladies impressive. Ladies and gentlemen, now the, the announcement. Is from Stand the by for the crowd reaction. Corner. Well, I think the low-key boos indicate the crowd understands this decision. You know, even when they booed him coming into the ring, there's no need for that. I mean, this is a class guy. What beautiful exhibition they saw. Perhaps the finest exhibition of boxing and punching that we've seen so far in this tournament, and that includes Hernandez and Simone, and they boo him. No way. Romero doubles up on Eric Morrell, 24 to 12. The planet of it. We have some live action right now, so let's rejoin Scott Oak and Russ Amber. All right, Ron, thank you very much, and welcome everybody to the Alexander Memorial Coliseum. Another session of boxing underway here, and we're set for the start of a light middleweight bout. 